Hi everybody, it's Betsy. This is day one of my series about myths about augmentative and alternative communication. So I wanted to start just by reviewing what augmentative and alternative communication is. I always call it AAC. Some people also call it AUGCOM. So with AUGCOM or AAC, what it is is any way that someone uses to communicate besides using their voice. So gestures can be considered augmentative communication or um, using sign language, using a picture exchange system, but I primarily talk about using technology. I love technology, especially iPads and iPhones, so I talk a lot about using AAC, using iPads, iPhones, um, and other computer technology to speak. So there are three myths that I'm going to go over through this course, and you can get a PDF about it from me by signing up. I will put afterwards, I'll put it in the comments below. So if you're watching live, you'll have to wait a few minutes. So the first myth is that a child is too young to use augmentative communication. And this is completely not true. I have evaluated kids as young as 20 months using eye gaze technology for augmentative communication. When you think about it, a child at the age of 12 months is already communicating really well with you. They are um, using gestures, sometimes they're using sign language if you use baby signs, and they're using a few words. So a child or an adult with a disability or difficulty with speaking, as long as they have a cognitive age of at least 12 months, they are good to go as far as I'm concerned with augmentative communication. So it frustrates me when I hear families say, oh, well, my child's 12 now, and everybody said that he was too young to use augmentative communication. It is a great alternative and really reduces frustration. So that is myth number one, busted by me. And like I said, I'll have a PDF. I'm going to talk about the other myths. We're going to go through three over the next few days. And then we'll do a wrap up. So if you want to get my PDF, just sign up for my email list. I'm going to put it in the comments how you do that. And I would love to share that with you. So you can share it with your speech pathologist or your family or your special education teacher because it's really important that we give these kids a voice. Everyone deserves a voice and they deserve their own voice and to be able to communicate everything that they feel and their wants and needs. So thank you so much. This is Betsy Furler. I'm with Communication Circles. If you see this someplace else, please follow me on my Communication, Face Communication Circles Facebook page. And also follow me on Twitter at Betsy Furler. It's B-E-T-S-Y-F-U-R-L-E-R. So please join me tomorrow morning for myth number two. Thanks, have a great day. Hi, this is Betsy again with Communication Circles. I am doing this short series to talk to you about the myths about augmentative communication, or AAC as I usually call it. Augmentative communication, or AAC, also sometimes called AUGCOM, is an area that's plagued with myths. There are many myths that keep parents therapists, users, um, educators and family and friends from using augmentative communication with their loved ones. So yesterday I talked about myth number one, that a child is too young or doesn't have the cognitive ability to use AAC, and we busted that myth by, say, by me telling you that a child at the age of 12 months or a cognitive age of 12 months does communicate and will be able to use AAC with the proper setup of the device as well as training and consistency with it. Myth number two that I'm going to talk about today is that your child won't talk if they use augmentative communication or AAC. I think this is probably the hardest myth to break and actually there is research back in the 80s saying that children will actually talk more if they use augmentative communication. They have to learn to communicate and if they don't have any means of communicating they won't be able to learn to communicate. So I have worked with several clients personally that used augmentative communication 
and then were able to use their own voices for verbal speech. So this is a myth that is easy to bust because of all the research out there, but hard to convince people of because they have fears that if they give their child some other item to use to communicate, that they won't talk. In reality, it is much easier to talk than use augmentative communication, and so kids will rely on talking rather than augmentative communication if they are successful with verbal speech. So it is very important to go ahead with augmentative communication and don't fear that your child will rely on it. They won't. They will use whatever works the best for them. And the goal is to have a child, or an adult for that matter, who is a functional communicator. We want everyone to be able to communicate. Everyone deserves a voice. I have set up a PDF for you and I will put it in the comments on how to get that so you can get your own PDF of myths surrounding augmentative communication. Please share this video on your social media and with your friends, family, therapists, and educators. Anyone who has any concerns about augmentative communication or my friends who just want to learn more about it. Tomorrow I will be back with the third myth about augmentative communication. I am working my hardest to do these at 10 a.m. Central Time, but I have a lot of other um, moving pieces in my life, like children, dogs, birds in my backyard who were tweeting too loudly for me to do a video, um, husband's calling, and things like that. So I will work my hardest to do these at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, and please come back and see me tomorrow. Follow me on my Communication Circles Facebook page or Betsy Walling Furler. Twitter is the same, Betsy Furler. It's F-U-R-L-E-R. -E and if you're a parent who's interested in using AAC, please join my private Facebook group. If you, send, if you comment um, below, I will send you the link so you can join my private Facebook page for parents who are working with augmentative communication with their kids. So thanks so much for watching. This is Betsy Furler with Communication. It's Betsy Furler with Communication Circles. I'm coming from my local HEB, which is our favorite grocery store here in Houston, Texas. So I am calling, or I am, I am filming today to tell you about the third myth associated with augmentative and alternative communication. I call it AAC frequently. Some people call it AUGCOM. So I talked about the other two myths earlier in this week, so if you haven't gotten to see those videos, please go back and watch those on my Facebook page, Communication Circles. The first one um, that I talked about was that the child is too young to benefit from AEC or doesn't have enough um, cognitive skills to benefit, and the, I busted that myth with saying that a child just needs the cognitive skills of a 12-month-old in order to communicate with augmentative communication. Myth number two was that a child won't talk if they use AAC. I also busted that myth. There's lots of research about that, so go back and listen to those videos. The third myth that I wanted to dispel today is that your child doesn't have the prerequisite skills to use augmentative communication. The truth is there are no prerequisite skills that you need before you get started. Now there are skills that I like to work on when I first get started with augmentative communication and I'll talk about some of those when I do my actual course on getting going with augmentative communication that I will launch in January. So please stay tuned to my Communication Circles Facebook page for that information. But a lot of people will say that a child needs to understand cause and effect or already know how to communicate before they can use augmentative communication, and it's not true. All of those skills can be gained through using augmentative communication and don't need to be, um, to, they don't need to learn those skills first. The faster you can get a child communicating with a great system, the better. So I just really encourage you all to look into augmentative communication for your nonverbal child. So that is the third myth busted about augmentative communication. Please share these videos with anyone that you know that might be interested. Have a child who is nonverbal or uses um, limited functional language 
or has a parent who may have had a stroke or a head injury and might need some communication help, um, any educators that you know, and just your friends who might want to learn about this. My goal is to make augmentative communication mainstream and something that everyone is offered, whether they've had a surgery and have a trach and can't talk, or it's a child who is unable to communicate verbally. So please keep in touch with me on my Facebook page, Communication Circles. This is Betsy Furler, and join me tomorrow for the wrap-up of my Myths of Augmentative Communication video. Thanks for watching me on Facebook Live. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hi, it's Betsy, and this is the last day of the Myths of AAC. So I wanted just to wrap up what augmentative communication is. I also call it AAC or AUGCOM, <coughs> excuse me. Um, augmentative communication is really using any type of method to help someone communicate. And when I talk about AAC, I am always talking about high-tech AAC, which would mean using a computer or a tablet or a phone for communication. So the three myths that I busted this week were, number one, that the child is too young or somebody's too old to benefit. And in reality, anybody can benefit at any age of augmentative communication. If they're nonverbal or having trouble communicating functionally, it is very, very worthwhile to get them started on augmentative communication. Myth number two that I busted is that the child won't talk if they use augmentative communication. This myth is almost always used around children. And it is not true. There's lots of research that goes way back to the 80s that shows us that augmentative communication actually encourages language. The third myth is that the child doesn't have the prerequisite skills to use augmentative communication. This is also busted in that all of those skills can be learned while they're using augmentative communication. They don't need to have the skills ahead of time. So hopefully this helped by busting three myths and making some people feel better about using augmentative communication. Please share this video with your family, friends, educators, therapists, and anyone else in the child's life to let them know that many, many people can use augmentative communication. My goal is to make augmentative communication mainstream and for it to be available for anyone who's struggling to speak verbally and or have functional communication. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to do another short live video series on Facebook about who, how, who, which children would benefit from augmentative communication. In the meantime, please join my mailing list and get my PDF about the myths of communication. I'm going to put it in the comments below. And again, please share this video.